Yo, what's going on everybody? As promised, today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to edit your hyperlapse and time-lapse videos. If you haven't seen my last video on how I do a hyperlapse using a gimbal like the Zion Crane 2, make sure to click above here. And what I want to do is give you guys some homework, getting your own footage so we could sit down side by side and edit together. For today's steps, what we're going to be doing is creating a preset in Adobe Lightroom and pasting it on all of our pictures. Once we're done with that, I'm going to show you the proper way to export it into a folder. This way you have everything in a sequence and then just the last final step, booting it into Adobe Premiere where we edit the video and add some stabilizing footage to your hyperlapses so they're a lot more smooth. What's up everybody, I'm Jason Anthony. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a full-time content creator. And on this channel, I like to teach you guys how to step up your content creating skills. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's waste no more time and get into this tutorial today, guys. Let's dive right in. Okay, everybody, so the first thing we're going to do is upload our photos to Adobe Lightroom. And what we're going to do is select the first picture that we want in our hyperlapse. And that's what I have right here. And what I did was I already edited the picture. Very easy, quick, clean edit. What we next want to do is go to the rest of our pictures from our hyperlapse, which is from here all the way down. I think it's about 100 photos. And what we're going to do is make sure the edited picture is selected. We're going to scroll down to the very end, which would be right here. We're going to hold down shift and then click so they're all highlighted. Now, once you do this, all you have to do is go back to the develop tab. Once we're in the develop tab, what we want to do is click on sync. And then every edit that we made on the first picture is going to copy onto all the pictures. So they all look cohesive. It's very simple. And this is a quick, easy way. And what we could do is if we go back to our library, you'll slowly see all the pictures starting to get the settings pasted right on. And all we have to do is wait for this. It takes a couple minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. And that's really it for the first step. Now that all the pictures have the same edit, what we're going to do is simply go to file down to export. And what you want to do is make sure name two is set at custom name sequence. We want to make sure these pictures are exported in a sequence. Put a custom name, I put rubies. Make sure your start number is at number one. And then choose the folder that you're going to be saving these pictures into. Hit export, and now we're just gonna wait a couple minutes. Okay, so our pictures are finished exporting, so we're now done with Lightroom, so you could close that out and open up Adobe Premiere. The first thing we wanna do is set up a proper sequence. So what I'm going to do is go up to File, New, and then Sequence. I like using the DLSR 1080p 24 frames per second and then hit OK. So now that we have our new sequence, all we have to do is export our pictures and we're almost done with the tutorial. Now this stage works for hyperlapses and time lapses. The only difference is we're not going to be adding stabilization to time lapses. So if you're looking for time lapses, continue following along. What I'm gonna do now is click right here, go to import, and now we're going to find the pictures. So I save them in my hyperlapse picture folder and we're gonna click on the first picture, go down to options, make sure image sequence is selected and hit import. Now we have everything selected right here. And what we could do is just drag the footage on and click on keep existing settings. So what it did was it saved it as a 30 frames per second video, that's fine. So now we're just going to resize our image by clicking on the video in the timeline. And now we could go over to scale, which is in the effects tab. And now we get the play. So I'm going to keep it at about 32%. And let's see if we could do a, a test run of how this is going to look. So let's hit play. And there we go. It's not going to play 100% smooth until we're rendered out at the end, but we get an idea and it's a little shaky. So what we want to do is add an effect for this hyperlapse called Warp Stabilizer. So what we're going to do is click on effects at the top, type in Warp, and then you have Warp Stabilizer. 
The first thing we have to do though, being that we resize this image, is nest this clip. So you're going to right click if you're on a PC or double finger click if you're on a Mac and then go to nest. Hit OK. And now we pretty much burnt the settings in for the scaling on this video. This will allow us to put warp stabilizer because warp stabilizer is kind of funny. Just as a side note, if you do any edits to your video footage, like cropping in or out or scaling, um, it won't let you put warp stabilizer on until you nest that video footage like I just showed you. Now what we can do is just grab it and drop it right on our footage. And for the smoothness, I like to set to either 30 or 35. So let's try 35 and let's let this analyze in the background. And as you can see right here, just a couple seconds while it's doing its thing, and it might crop in a little bit, but that's how it gets the stabilized footage nice and smooth. All right, so we saw the little adjustment it made, and now what we could do is go back to the beginning of our clip, hit play, and look at the difference. Boom. Now there is a slight rotation right here so what we can do now is try to adjust it to 30% and see if that helps out some. And there we go. That's our hyperlapse. Not much of a difference on the rotation, but I just continue to play with the stabilizing settings. And sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't. But at this point, okay, so with 20%, this is how it looks. And there's a slight curve still, but I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm, Good to use it for a cut clip in a travel vlog. Warp stabilizer is funny. Sometimes you have to just play with it, but you can get it. Okay, and the last step is to add some music, some cinematic bars, that type of good stuff. Um, and we can export it. Very simple. Go to File, Export Media. And now I'm going to show you my uh, YouTube settings real quick. So I have a preset saved. And all it calls for is having 1920 by 1080 over here. Make sure you have the right frame rate. Render at maximum depth is checked off here. Use maximum render quality right there. And then for the VBR2 pass, I have it set to 16 and that's it. Make the name right here, hyperlapse. Click save, export, and you're done guys. Very simple and effective way to edit your hyperlapses and time lapses. All right, everybody, so that wraps up today's tutorial on how to edit hyperlapses and time lapses. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a thumbs up. And once again, if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you guys ever have any questions for me, follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. I answer them right away. But until next time, guys, I'm Jason Anthony. I'll see you soon. Peace out.